In this video, where we're going to be talking about starting with Sneak, we're going to talk about how you can import your first projects to not only test, monitor, but also fix the issues that you find in your applications. Now to get started, we're going to go over to the Sneak interface. When you first sign up to Sneak, you'll see a screen very similar to what you're seeing here without the side menu. Or whenever you have a new organization, you'll see the brand new onboarding wizard. Now the onboarding wizard is designed to help you import your first projects, which might actually be in a number of different integrations. However, we've defaulted to some of the more common ones right out of the gate, but you always have the option to go to integrations for the full menu of integrations. Or you'll notice that when you click add projects, you'll also notice you have the other menu here. Now on the screen that you're seeing here, one of the things that you'll notice is there is a section for connecting to your GitHub or your other Git repositories. If you don't want to connect to your Git repositories, that's fine. You'll see a section dedicated to the CLI. And for the purposes of today's presentation, we're going to focus largely on the brand new CLI integration. However, it is important to note, you can connect to your code repository. And then once you've connected to it, you can onboard your projects from GitHub or any of the other Git repositories that Sneak supports. You can even monitor public repositories as well. Now, as of May 2023, we've actually introduced a new capability where CLI is being treated as a first-class citizen within Sneak with the full wizard and full capability to prompt you through importing projects. So what you'll see is that when you go to import from the CLI, you'll be presented with a wizard that walks you through step-by-step -step on how to import a project. Now on my screen, what you'll see is a split screen where I have my browser up on the top and down below you can see my terminal. Now, the first step that you'll want to do is install Sneak. And the way that you do that is by using one of the methods that's provided here, where you can install Sneak using an executable. That executable has all of the key things that Sneak needs to run and brings it along with it. This is very advantageous if you're installing on a brand new machine or more commonly on a build system. We also have other methods which are really quick and easy to use. Like for example, you can use an NPM install. We also have homebrew as well as scoop. Use whichever method is appropriate for your machine and the environment that you're installing, which might be locally or on a build system. Now, from here, I'm going to install Sneak using npm install g sneak. You'll see that Sneak's now installed. The next step that we want to do is we now want to authenticate our machine. And so once you've signed up with Sneak, this will do a little bit of a handshake so that your CLI is authenticated. And this can be done again either locally on your machine or on a build system. If you are doing it locally on your machine, you'll typically you'll have a browser. So you can actually use this command where you simply type sneak auth. And what this will do is open a browser. You'll be asked to sign in and there a handshake will be done and then you're ready. So let's go ahead and do that. And now that we've authenticated to sneak, you'll see that a congratulation message is now presented to the screen and then we're ready to move on to the next step. Now, if you are configuring this on a build system, there are actually many different ways that you can authenticate Sneak using an environment variable, using a account token that you can pass to the Sneak Auth command. Uh, there's even service accounts if you're on one of the Sneak Enterprise plans. Now, as we scroll down, you'll see now that we can start scanning yeah, for security issues. So from here, what I'm going to do is I have a, depending on which project I wanna scan, and what it is that I want to scan, you'll see that there are menu items here indicating that I can scan open source, scanning your first party code or your source code. You can scan containers as well as infrastructure as code. And what you'll notice is that the, you can actually expand the show command breakdown. And you'll notice that you have a description of each of the commands and some of the more common options. In fact, we've tried to default the most common options here that are available. But you'll notice that you have a view docs link here, which can take you to a much broader set of commands. Uh, even some language and ecosystems have uh, certain commands that you may want to run to focus in certain areas or to filter, especially in your first scans. But all of the most common defaults have already been set for you. It even has the organization ID indicating where the results should be placed or where the 
scan setting should be pulled from. Now, when you go to do your scans, you can actually test locally on your machine and you can get the results very easily using the sneak test command. And then you would use the rest of the options that you see here. So for example, let me go to my project where I have my source code. So right now I've navigated to the root of my folder where I have my current project. I have a mixture of NPM and Node. I also have some infrastructure as code, which actually involve both Terraform as well as Kubernetes files or deployment files, I should say. And then I also have a container that I'm building as well. And so what we can do is we can use each of these tabs to help us understand how to go about testing our project. So as I mentioned before, and I'll just do it with open source to start, you'll notice that I can always run the sneak test command, and I can even copy what's in the interface to get us started. Except I'm gonna modify that command just a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the test command to start. Now what sneak has done is we've actually searched that entire directory and we looked for all of the manifests that we could find that are used to enumerate what open source is being used. We've interacted with the build system and we've actually provided a list of security issues as well as fixes that are needed. And if you are on a plan that has license, which is typically sneak team and enterprise, what you'll notice here is that we will raise license issues, but we'll actually indicate for each of the security issues that were found, what package you need to upgrade from and which package you need to upgrade to in order to address a, a, a number of vulnerabilities and which vulnerabilities will be uh, addressed as a result of making that upgrade. Now, that's great. We have the results locally. If we tied into a build system, that would actually potentially fail the build. Now, what if we want to share the results? Well, that's where the command here becomes very useful because now we can take those results that are local on our machine or maybe local on the build system and we can now push those results up to the web interface. And I'm just gonna use the command as is. And it just takes a few moments, but what we see there is that the results have been pushed from my machine up to the web interface. And let's go take a look. And in fact, the output even provides a link for each of the manifests that were found so we know where those were put. So let's actually go to the web interface and look at where those results were pushed. So. What we're seeing here is I scanned an application called Juice Shop. And what we see here is that I ran a CLI scan. And as we scroll down, you can see that there were over 1,200 dependencies detected. And I can go into that tab and I can see a list of all the dependencies. I can even see a dependency tree to see how they were brought in and what vulnerabilities were found and where and so on. Or I can go to the issue screen and start reviewing the issues, which again, all that wonderful detail about what was the issue, what do I need to upgrade to get out of it, what is that issue, and all the wonderful detail and how to action are all there. Um, if I've tied into a JIRA system, for example, I'll even see a link where I can log those JIRA tickets. So from here, we can go and review each of the manifests that we uploaded, or we can even go back to our project screen, and we can see a list of each of the things that was pushed up by Sneak or we can go back to the menu and we can now take a look at the other things that we need to test and monitor as well. So for example, for source code scanning, we can actually run sneak code test and get a review of the results. Now, sneak is introducing in beta a brand new feature for reporting, which you'll see very soon. We can also export those results using uh, Serif or JSON. We can also even publish this to an HTML format using the Sneak to HTML plugin. So there's lots of different ways that you can interact with the results from Sneak code. We also have Sneak containers where you can run a scan. So from here, what you're gonna use is the Sneak container test or monitor command. And what you'll do is you'll actually provide the container image information that you need. Like for example, in my case, I have my image hosted on Docker Hub. So I would then provide the repository and the tag that I'm using, which might be the latest as an example, or if I have it locally on my machine and I've tagged it there, it will go and test that there. So either locally or pull it down from uh, the remote repository. And then of course, again, you wanna provide the organization ID indicating where to pull settings from, but also where to push it to, especially if you're doing the monitor command. Now, one of the neat things about container monitoring as well as open source monitoring is it not only does the initial test, 
but it also sets up the recurring testing. So if a brand new issue is found six weeks later because of a researcher who's looking at those packages, you will automatically get notified. And then last but not least, we have infrastructure as code as well. So Sneak uh, can actually test your infrastructure as code, which could be anything like, for example, CloudFormation templates, Terraform. Uh, it could be uh, Kubernetes deployment files and so on. There's a whole host of types of files that Sneak can go in and monitor and, or, and test rather. And so what you'll see here is they'll run the Sneak IAC test. And because it's not monitoring packages, you're looking at settings in your infrastructure as code, you're actually going to use a option called report to optionally push those results up to the web interface, similar to what we saw with open source. Or we could just keep the results local and not use the dash dash report option. And then again, similarly, you'll prov provide the org ID. Now again, infrastructure as code is very powerful. There's lots of wonderful things that you can do, especially with Terraform. You can look at plan files and so on. So definitely take a look at the documentation to see all the advanced options that you have available to you as well. So this is the brand new onboarding capability within Sneak. That's how you can run your different tests, how you can review the different results and push it up to the web interface. And then last but not least, you'll notice that there's a go to projects page link that will bring you to your project.